Hey, welcome back to Spirit Music Meetups. Mike Burr's out, out here in the park, and I have a few really cool exercises for your stick control that you can do. Some of these are borrowed from different sources, so you might recognize some of them. And I'm not doing them in any, any order of theirs, so I'm just going to do it as, as they come to me. I believe in spontaneity. I receive, and then I deliver. So, alright, so the first one that comes to me is doing uh, eight notes, right? One and two and. So, this is a quadruplet because there's one, two, three, four. So, you can count it that way, but I'm going to count it in eighth notes, or you can count it one E and uh, I think that's really good. So, we're going to go one E and uh, two E and uh, one E and uh, two E and. Or up to four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E. So now as I change it a little bit, I'm going to do this as switching. One E and a. So the momentum of this will carry on through the rest of the strokes. So I'm going to start in a switch position. The idea is to let it bounce like you're bouncing a ball. You don't bounce a ball like you're shaking a hand. Okay? Now, left hand grip is a shaking of the hands, right? So, it's a little different. It's a twisting motion. So, I'm going to go back to this motion, uh, match grip, so you can see the commonality of it. Right? So, let me get this right. Match grip, letter A, it's going to be like bouncing a ball. You don't bounce a ball this way. You don't bounce a ball this way. You don't bounce a ball that way. You bounce a ball like this. Your arm is straight. But when you put the stick in, it forms a letter A. So it actually kind of looks like 45 degree angle. With both of them, it's a 90 degree angle. So it should look like that letter A, or to you, it looks like the letter V. So I'm just going to go like this, I'm not getting into a lot of te technique right now, just bounce the ball and put the stick in your hand, and uh, if you want to do this right, put it in the first groove, and it'll pivot into the second groove, let me see, this is a little technique I guess, so it's in the first groove, and it's pivoting up to the second groove, so it's in the first groove, but when it bounces, it goes up into the second groove. It kind of stops there because your finger has a little pudge there. It kind of stops, but it's at the top of the stroke. So my fingers, three, four, and five, see the two fingers are across from each other. And then two, three, I'm sorry, that's two. Three, four, and five are lightly on the stick. And so it's pivoting. Call it one hand, I call it hand waving or stick waving. See, it's pivoting from the first groove to the second groove, first groove to the second groove, and the fingers are going out as it's bouncing. I'm not really going like this with my wrist. The stick is bouncing and my wrist is going with the flow. All right, so this is what it looks like straight on. See the two fingers are, there's some stick showing. See the stick showing? And it's, it's against this pad, the soft pad of your hand. It's not down in this groove. That'll hurt your uh, ligaments and nerves right here, the blood vessels. You can damage your hand forever. So you want to be in that pad. You don't want to be up here. You don't want to go sideways. You don't play sideways. You play like you're fishing. You're throwing your fishing rod out. And when the weight of the stick goes back, see, it's going back, there's air in front, sound and back. So it just goes back like this, and then it goes forward, back like that. Now I'm going to do it from another angle. So it's in the first groove, and it goes back. The fingers catch it. I don't throw the fingers off. The fingers are going along for a ride, controlling the stick in the air. I'm not doing it. I'm not snapping my fingers back. At this point, I'm just letting, I'm bouncing the ball. I'm using my wrist to 
bounce the ball. That makes sense? And I'm just putting my... So this is what it looks like from the side. So there should be... It wants to go out of your hands, but those fingers keep it from... I'm not lifting my wrist up. It bounces. The stick does all the work for you. All you're doing is going along for the ride. You should feel a lot of energy coming off this. You should not have your fingers all grip, you know, tense like this. This stops the motion of thing. It should be relaxed in the first groove, right? So you should be able to, you know, open and close, but it's very relaxed. There's air in here to keep your hand from sweating. See, I can see right through it. You can see the car behind me. It's right through the hole. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can. So the fingers are just going along for the ride. So there's the technique of it. I'm trying to keep the fingers somewhat together so that it's a seesaw, like in the park here. It's seesawing. pivoting in the fulcrum. This is called the fulcrum. So you want to keep those fingers together so that all you're doing is using your fingers and your wrist. I'm kind of just going, I'm just kind of going like that. I'm actually keeping these fingers together and just kind of going like this, kind of waving and wiggling my hand, waving and wiggling my hand like you bounce a basketball. You don't hold the basketball down and then pick up the basketball. You bounce it with a flick of your wrist. Sometimes a little flick of the fingers. And then that keeps it bouncing. There's a lot of energy there and our role as a drummer is to stay out of the way of the natural bounce. And then do this with the left hand. You should feel it wanting to come out of your hand. There's a lot of energy that wants to come out of your hand, fly out behind you. I can just lose my stick. But because my fingers are going along for the ride, it can only go so high. And my fingers are just going along for the ride. It's kind of hard to do this slow, like it's hard to bounce a ball slow. This has its natural speed. So you're just doing this. So you're going to go one, two. You don't want your fingers out here. It's a sign of tension if your fingers are out here. Plus, there's no way to control the stick in the air as it's bouncing. You don't want it to wobble around like this. You want it to go straight up and down. See, right towards my shoulder. Right over your arm. It should be bouncing right over your arm. Not out here. Not in here right over your arm, just like a basketball, right? So your, your arms should be straight, but your hands are in the letter, in a letter A or a B, right? So you're going to go one, two, or you can count one and two. And I like to count one, two. It's called counting the quarter note. One, it's called the big daddy, the one and, the, the quarter note, the one, two, three, four. That's, that's the big daddy. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Notice I keep this one down, relaxing until it's ready. One, two, one, two, one. So with that last one, it comes down and this one goes up at the same time. One, two, one, two. See, they switch at the same time. One, Two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Try to keep the pinky on the stick, not out here, because that's 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 something you can use. You can use your pinky to move that stick. It's also a little bit more control of the stick, keeps the stick from moving around side to side. So that's counting in eighth notes. You could go one, two, three, four. 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 Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then you 
you're going to be counting pretty fast, right? Because you're counting every stroke. So as you go faster, it's going to be lo, 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 lo. So you want to start counting eighth notes. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. So the last stroke, you put your fingers back on. It traps it. One, two. I trapped it and moved this stick at the same time. So it's now I'm ready. One, two, one, two, trap. One, two, trap. One, two, trap. One, two, one, two, trap. Trap it on the last one. But once you, you don't have to peep. Keep pulling your fingers in. That slows you down just on the last one. Right? But you switch right then. So it's, there's no gap. Right? Let's go to 16th notes. One, E, and, A. Uh. So you're going to trap it on the, A. Uh. One, E, and, A. Uh. So right on the, A, uh, you switch. And you trap at the same time. Two, E, and, A. Uh. Three, E, and, A. Uh. Four, E, and, A. Uh. One, E. So I'm not going to go really fast because I want you to focus on four. So that's a good exercise. Now let's go out a little further to uh, six. Now you can do going out one, two, three, four, five. That's called odd time. It's very odd feeling. So why not? One, two, three, four, five. You know, we could have we could have started just with one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. We could have done that. But I want to get more of a workout. So I want to go farther than two. I want to go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know. So yeah, one, two is called doubles. And there's a lot of techniques for this, but we're just trying to do bouncing ball. Feel the energy so both of them come up. They're called rebound strokes. And you trap the last one. And you can count eighth notes. One and two and one and two and three and four and one. And you can go out as far as you want. And we can count sixteenths. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So you can do that. Just feeling that rebound and set your metronome, push yourself going faster and faster. So there's other techniques that you use when you go faster. So maybe not both of them are rebounds, but right now we're trying to feel the rebound, feel the energy, let it move in your hands. Let the, let the whole thing move in your hands. Effortless, all day long you can do this. Let's go out to uh, three on each hand. So you could count one, two, three, switch right there. One, two, three, one, two, three, two, three, one, 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 two, three. That's uh, quarter notes. You, or if you're counting in, <laughs> it's all how you count, right? You could count numbers in three, eight time because now the eighth note is actually being counted one, two, three, even though they're eighth notes, they're one, two, three. Three sixteen time, you're counting three sixteenth notes, one, two, three. So the meter time signature always tells you how to count. Three counts in the measure and the whatever, quarter, eight, sixteenth gets the count. So now let's count in, instead of one, two, three, let's go to eighth note, triplets now it's not eighth note one and two you could count one and two and three and four and five and six and you could do something like that just regular eighth notes but let's go to eighth note triplets is it one i count eighth note triplets one d da d da because the e is not the d is not exactly an e it's close to an e 
So D is 0.33 the way through, one third of the way through, not 0.25, one quarter of the way through, as the 16th note E is, one E and a, uh, those are 16th notes, but one D da, those E's and us are not exactly, the D is 0.33 and the da is 0.66. They're not 0.25 and 0.75 that you'll see in one E and up. So I'm going to count one D da. Now if you go fast, you start to lose the D and the da. You get into the E and the uh. It kind of sounds like E and up. One E, a two E, a three E, a four E, a one E, a two E, a three E, a four E. It's hard to say one D da, two D da. You can't do that very easily. So don't worry about it. One D da, two D da. D da, 1 D da, 2 D da, 3 D da, 4 D da. I'll do four counts in the measure and still counting. I'm out in this park, I'm getting eaten. I better do something. 1 E a, 2 E a, 3 E a, 4 E a, 1 E a, 2 E a, 3 E a, 4 E a. Again, switch right on that last stroke. All right, that's the key. And we can count 16 note triplets, which I count 1 D D and da uh, da. So it's like D da, but it's 1 D D and da uh, da. That's your 16, your 16th note triplets. 1 D D, 1 D D and da uh, da. 2 D D and da uh, da. 1 D D and da uh, da. 2 D D and da uh, da. So see how I did that? And that's probably as far as you'd want to count. I'm gonna pause this and get some mosquitoes repellent. All right, I'm back. So now we can go to four. We already did the four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and, and four and, or one E and a, uh, two E and a. Uh. So we just went through those. You could do eighth note triplets, but again, it's kind of weird because they're not exactly four. One E, one D da, two D da, three. It's hard to keep track of where you're at. It's easier to see on paper, right? One D da, two D da, three D da, four D da. It's, really, it's hard to keep track of where you're at. Same with 16th note triplets. Really hard. So let's go to fives. The only way I know is one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, some people I've seen count one, I like to do this, D, D, da, da. Or D, da, I'm sorry, D, da, D, da. Think in pairs, D, da, D, da. Like one D da triplets. Think one D da D da. That's five. So there's two even pairs, and uh, the first count makes your odd, right? So it's even pairs, even pairs. D da D da D da is six total, plus one would be seven. So that's how you get into the odds. So it's one, one. One, oh yeah, one D, you want to rebound all the way up. One D da D da, two D da D da, one da 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 da, two D da D da, one D da D da, two D da D da. So I can just keep track of D da D da and know that's that's it, right? There's two pairs. One D da D da, two D da D da, one D da D da, two D da D da. But ultimately, you want to hear the number of strokes and just know without counting after you've counted for a while internalize that rhythm you just hear one d da d da you hear that one. you can say it in your head too you can hear that one d da d da in your head you can see it visually one d da d da or in your mouth those pentuplets just like this is a quadruplet 
then it's a pen toplet, and then it's a sex toplet, and then it just keeps going septuplet, octuplet. What's nine? Deca, uh, Deca's ten, so I don't know what nine. I don't know what nine is. So it's some Latin thing, or I don't know. So let's talk about going to sixes, sex tuplets. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 And you can count it one triplet, two triplet, or one D dot, two D dot, one D dot, one D dot, two 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 D dot. Right? Eight no triplets. You could count it. You could try to count in sixteenths. Again, it's not going to line up. One e and uh, two e and uh, three e and uh. <laughs> that was six sex tuplets. You could count it as, as uh, sixteen no triplets. That's, okay. One d da and da da. Two d d and da da. One d d and da da. Two d d and da da. One d d and da da. Two d d and da da. One d d and da da. Two d d and da da. What we're trying to get is the same amount of energy, same amount of bounce. Septuplets. Again, d da d da d da is your pairs. One d da d da d da. Two d da d da d da. Three d da d da d da. Four d da d da d da. Something like that, and oct uh, octuplets, which are really 30-second notes, uh, 16 notes double, right? Or you could count one and two and three and four, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, think about that. That's also, you can do eighth notes. One and two and three and four and, because four times two is eight. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. You want to just keep going faster and faster. Now, what about uh, counting it in eighth note triplets? Again, it doesn't line up. Three, three is six, then you got two, and it's gonna go, it's not gonna line up. It's gonna be hard. You can do that on paper. You can do that if you really think about it. I don't wanna do it. Why? You're just exercising, right? Let's go to eighth note triplets. One D da, two D da, three D. No, one D da, two D. No, we already said that. We're trying to get eight, so we gotta go to sixteenths. One E and a, two E and a. That's two times four is eight. One E and a, two E and a. 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 See how I stop? There's no more to go. Switch on the last one. So we could do 30 second notes, which means you count the sixteenths, right? But you get two 30 seconds for every sixteenth. One, right? One, E, and, ah. Uh, and there's your eight. And you got it on that last, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. So you can go one, E. You can go one, one, E, E, and, ah, uh, and, ah, uh, ah. Uh. But how do you say that? That's, that's what it really is. Like. Well, I go wa, wa, E, and, ah, uh, wa, E. So you kind of hear it in your voice. One, E, and, ah, uh, two, E. That's how I do it. Well, I e, kind of waver my voice, you know, <laughs> kind of a vibrato there. So there you go. I went up to eight. You could go farther if you want, but, and I know some people that do because they just want to really work their chops and they want to think in larger numbers. It maybe helps them in something. I don't know if I ever have to think more than eight of something. Try to feel that bounce. I'm not really trying to get a lot of speed right now. I'm just trying to feel that bounce. Sometimes, okay, so let's talk about, that was switching, you know. 
actually it was staying put on the bottom, right? And then switch. So da 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 da. So you're switching it as you go to the other side. But a lot of people like to do this thing, which is not so much a rebound stroke. It's to practice tap strokes way down here. They're rebounding, but they're only coming up to a tap level. Now that requires using your fingers. So when you're down there, you have to use your fingers. You have to learn how to wave. See, the wrist is not really moving very much. And so you gotta learn how to do this little tapping with your fingers. You see, I still have my fulcrum up here, but I'm learning how to wave. I'm learning how to wave. You see that? I'm tiny little movements in my fingers. I have a little more problem with my left hand. I don't have as much control. I'm working more on my left hand tradition grips, but this is this is pretty good. I'm not coming up too high. I'm using my fingers to wave. So that's a whole nother way of doing it. This is to really feel the energy and really develop power and speed, really. It really will develop this. Because you're feeling the energy and you're, you're capitalizing on that energy. You're really wanting to feel that energy. You're not really lifting your... You're not pushing the ball down to the ground and then pulling the ball up. You're just, you're just kind of like wobbling your hand after a while. You're just kind of just kind of wobbling your hand, you know. And you develop this nervous twitch. My nervous twitch is not so good on my left. So, I mean, this is really good practice to learn how to, you know, bounce a ball. You can bounce a ball in your left hand, make it go up and down, not all over the place. You know, a nice basketball. That'll develop this this feeling, excuse me. You really want to get that. So you could also, so that's called switching, right? To practice your taps. Some people say, well, this is, you know, da 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 da. So a lot of people like to hang out here. This is another good exercise. Starting up here. Now, I, I like this too because I always tell my students, man, you, yeah, you got to get your rebound, your back beats up. You know, after you're playing, don't hang out down here because you're going to be late especially as you go to faster and faster tempos. If you don't do this and pull your hand up, just let it, first of all, if you hold it down all the time, you're soaking up all that energy into your wrist. You're going to really hurt your wrist, your fingers, your elbow, and it goes up to your shoulder and then finally in your neck. All that energy has got to go somewhere. So really, when you're playing... Feel the energy. Just let the stick work for you, and it'll always be ready to come down and play hard. Back beats need to be hard, but don't muscle it down and then take all that energy into your body. It's a lot of people are screwed up. So just let it rebound. And so I say this is a good exercise. For a lot of drummers, this is way better than this. But this is very good, and a lot of people work on that to learn how to do that switch at the end. And that switching is very important in a lot of drumming too. So this is very good for developing the idea of being up, ready to play. See, there is no ghost notes, there's no quiet notes, so why are you going down? You only go down and stay down for ghost notes like this.
Why go down and then back up, down, back up? No, just back up. If there's no ghost notes, just get back up. We should just be bouncing the ball. This should be less and less of our playing because it's only for ghost notes, which are just to create phrasing and flow and interest. But the backbeat. Everything that's going to be really heard has to be rebounded. So that will train us to stay up here, always getting our stick back into the prepared position. All this stuff is for, like I said, hardly anybody hears it. So uh, a lot of people don't even waste doing it. But it, it is very important, especially on recordings and uh, small trios and where people are going to hear everything, right? So this is good for a lot of people. This is good too because it teaches you to, to switch on the on the end. So it's one and two and three and four and one and two and four and one. So it's simultaneous switching at the end. That's important. And then real switching for ghost noting one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and one two two one two three one two one two one two one Two one two one two three one two three one two three one two three four five one two three four five one two three four one two three four one two three four one. It's really teaching you finger control after you have the downstroke. Downstrokes stay down. Rebound strokes are full. They come right back up. Okay, I hope this helps you. It's a lot of technique for one video, and put your ideas down here on the bottom so you can help other people. God bless you.